Okay. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to draw something. I don't know. Um, like this. Hmm? Isn't that pretty? Like it's shiny. Now you know what it is. It's a diamond. Okay. So diamond we we is 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 100% carbon and we certainly know at room temperature and pressure it, it, it seems to exist it actually is is not thermodynamically stable but we'll get to that um, and we know it's carbon it's in fact sp3 hybridized so we've got four covalent bonds and they're all uh, the same behavior you know in in um, two dimensions, we would sketch it like this. We'd say, well, carbon's bonded to four other carbons, and that continues. But that is is not, you know, that, that that's, that's two dimensions. We want to know what this looks like in three dimensions. And so we have this central carbon atom with four other carbons coming out of it. And for uh, for um, covalent bonds, and you know we can create faces on that if you will. In fact, let me draw that for you a little bit bigger. I'm trying to draw a tetrahedron. Okay. So a tetrahedron is this four-sided. Clearly, I'm not an artist. Four-sided. That's the. Yeah, they're supposed to be all exactly the same shape, but this is a tetrahedron. Ah, uh, he. Tetrahedra. So it's got four sides, and you know the positioning of atoms um, would be like well, got one right in the very center of that thing, got one on each corner, and um, we've got a covalent bond between each. So that's that's the arrangement of um, bonds that we have. But our human minds, our human brains. Um, Sometimes I like to make things a little bit simpler if we can to visualize. I mean, we could just say that's the structure of diamond and that repeats. But you can actually go to a few, when you, when you introduce a few more carbon atoms, you can actually, you realize that there's actually a cubic symmetry to it. And that's nice because we like simple geometry. Um, oh, look at that. I broke my tetrahedron. All right, glue it back together. There we go. All right. So, um, and I, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to show you how this cubic symmetry exists. So here's a cube. We're familiar with this. We've seen this in face-centered cubic. We've even seen it in the rock salt crystal structure. And so what it involves is it involves an atom at each corner. All right. And I'm going to draw here for you to depict that there's one eighth of an atom at each corner. This is the back here now. All right, so there's one eighth of an atom at each corner, and then there's atoms in face-centered positions. Okay, front face, top face, right face, but there's also, of course, the left face hidden, so I'll dash it in, back face, and the bottom face. And so that gives us um, four atoms in total. Okay, four atoms from the FCC. Uh, positions, but we need more, and we need to find spaces where we can fit an atom where it will be touching four others. Now, this kind of a tetrahedral coordination, this, this uh, four atoms nearest to it, and I think the easiest way to do this is actually just to show you, and then I'll try to go around and come back to it and show you different ways to visualize it to help uh, make it more concrete. If you look at this kind of uh, this region here of this unit cell. And by this region, I mean towards the bottom, okay, bottom half, towards the left-hand side, and towards the front. Right in the middle of that bottom left front area is a space. And I could actually put an atom there, a carbon atom there, and then I could draw these bonds to that left side face, the front, um, sorry, the front bottom left, the front face center, and the bottom face center position. Now, because of the perspective I've drawn this on, it's a little hard to tell, but that is, in fact, the same 
tetrahedral geometry that I sketched before. Uh, I could I could try. I hope this doesn't go too bad, but I could show you the faces um, here. Okay, and yeah. the last one is in there. There we go. Okay, so that is in fact a tetrahedral um, a tetrahedral site. So it may it may be a little hard to tell that this is in fact the same tetrahedron as I had over here, but you remember the rotate the, the angle that we're looking at is different. So this tetrahedron that I drew up here, if you imagine you went kind of rotated that over so that this atom was in that corner, this one then maybe became that bottom face. You could have this atom taking that face position and this one here taking that left side face position. It is in fact the same. Um, but let me show you some other ways to visualize that site and then we're going to go back to create the finally the entire um, diamond cubic crystal structure. So what I'd like to do next to um, better show you where that tetrahedral site exists because you might not have followed this and admittedly my uh, artistic abilities are somewhat limited as hard as I try. If I, uh, if I cut this thing in half, okay, and front to back, I'm going to slice this cube in half. That's what I've done. And then I'm going to slice it in the plane of the page in half again. And then finally, in this horizontal plane, I'm going to slice it in half. So what have I done? I've now sliced it into eight little, we'll call them subcubes. Okay, subcubes. That is, they're these little cubes, um, but they're they're smaller. They're within the um, within the uh, the original unit cell. I can dot in this top uh, front right one here for you. I dot in the back so you can kind of see. Well, there's um, a cube. That's one of these subcubes. Okay. And in fact, in the very center of that subcube is this interstitial site that I'm talking about. So right in the very center of that front top right, label that. So we're clear here. This subcube is towards the front, towards the top, and towards the right. Okay, it's opposite in the front plane from from this bottom left front. Um, so that's where that is. And then I draw the direction of contact again here. Maybe you'll see this tetrahedral a little bit more clearly. So that is in fact tetrahedral. I could try to make it into a tetrahedral solid for you by showing the triangular faces, okay? Um, so that is, there, there you go, that's again the um, tetrahedral interstitial site. So, and I've actually drawn the alternating corners here on purpose because, in fact, for every carbon to be bonded to four others, we can only fill half of these subcubes. So there's eight subcubes but only half, that is four of them, are filled. A name for a space between other atoms is interstitial site. It's a little bit unusual to refer to an interstitial site in, in diamond because they're all, every atom is carbon. But if you start thinking about this, as a space that you could fit an atom between others, it'll help you in other crystal structures that have some similarities to, to this. So let's um, continue on again. We've, we've spent a little time on this, and I'm going to sketch for you another yeah, unit cell, um, a fresh one, and we'll go ahead and identify which ones have carbon in them, and then you'll know the diamond cubic crystal structure, like the back of your hand. So here's a cube, okay, dash in the back for you there. And this time I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the subcubes for you as we did before. So I've got eight little identical cubes making up the um, greater, the, the larger unit cell. And what I showed you on the previous slide is I've got in this front bottom left a carbon, in the front top right, the carbon and then 
what happens is these alternate in space so that they're spaced out as far apart as they can. That is, they wouldn't all, all four of them would not occupy the bottom half of the unit cell or the right side. They're going to alternate. So they alternate um, top to bottom, left to right here. Well, in the back of the unit cell, they're going to do the same thing. So that means the back um, top left site will be filled and the back bottom uh, right. So this is the, sorry, the back top left and the back bottom right will be filled. So they alternate. And a student a few years ago showed me a little trick that was useful for him. And if you just sort of, if you, if you picture those little sub cubes, and what I do for you is I shade in the exposed, the free surfaces of the sub cubes that contain an occupied tetrahedral site, you'll see the positioning of the tetrahedral sites perhaps a little bit more clearly. So there you go. Those are the occupied tetrahedral sites or the positions of those carbon atoms in amongst all the other carbon atoms in diamond cubic. And so finally what I'll do is I'll just position the FCC positioned ones for you. Okay, I'm back in that corner there, top, front, right side, and maybe for simplicity I won't. Well, I can dot, dot in the ones that are hidden okay, for completeness. So that is diamond cubic. And this tetrahedral symmetry is a really uh, important one. It comes up in organic molecules. It comes up in many semiconductor devices. So understanding diamond cubic is a really good foundation for proceeding to other crystal structures and other structures.